uh, and all. So what I want to do is, is, in order for us to understand this, we need to get a general history. We have to take you back into history to clear up all this stuff on how um, just about anything but the Christians or the Judeo-Christian paradigm is evil. So they say, well, what is evil? Well, they say anything that didn't make it into the Christian canon. So let's, we have to go into history. It's like one guy told me one time, well, it is known that the Buddhists, that the Buddhists worship Satan. I said, oh, boy. I said, that is magnificent. Can you explain to me how the Buddhists worship Satan? And the guy said, he, he, he went deaf and silent. I said, you don't even know what Buddhism is, do you? He said, no. I said, so you are quoting something that somebody gave you. So most of the stuff that we call evil is more political than it is evil itself. I hate to bust your bubble, but the Satan that they're talking about that's got everybody so scared doesn't exist. It never did, at least not on the level on what you think it is, or some man under the ground with a pitchfork. So in order for you to understand this, I must go into a brief history of how this whole thing started and how even the ancient Egyptians was dubbed evil, um, um, dubbed evil based on a political thing. Now, just remember that one man's devil is another man's God. Just remember that. Um, so in order for, in order for us to start, we need to go back to the beginning. We want to go back to what is called Typhonian Egypt. This is pre-dynastic Egypt. The Typhonian period, a uh, pre-dynastic period, existed, matured, and declined even before the first monumental phase of Egypt. And the first monumental phase of Egypt is 3,000 years ago. So the Typhonian, or what we call Typhonian, Ophidian, Draconian, um, these different names of the Kushite Empire, because the Egyptians said that we come from the south, went from the foothills of the mountain of the moon where the god Hopi dwells. Hopi is the Nile, Hopi is also Osiris in a later form. But to, to deal with this, you had what is called your pre-dynastic period. Now your pre-dynastic period um, was about 8,000 years before your um, dynastic period, which lasted about 3,000 years. So in all, we talk about 10 to 11,000 years. Now your pre-dynastic period declined and you had your dynastic period. So your pre-dynastic period or your Typhonian area, era, which worship a god named Set, his mother, Typhon, his, uh, another name for her is Tyre, Ty, uh, um, Tyert, or Tawaret, or even Apep, the great dragon. Now, this lasted for 8,000 years, rough. We're just giving you some things. It could, it, it, it could be more than that, and more than likely it is, but we have to give people a time frame. And then the new Ammonites came into place, so we want to give you some documentation. Um, and we'll give you uh, several books you can get on these particular things, uh, like Gerald Mass's Book of the Beginning, uh, Book of the Beginning, Volume 1. Uh, Gerald Mass's Book of the Beginning, Volume 1, 1881. Uh, Gerald Mass's uh, Natural Genesis, um, 1888, and culminating in his last and final book, uh, Gerald Mass's Ancient Egypt, Light of the World. Um, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, um, which was uh, um, which was 1907. We just celebrated the 100-year anniversary. That was the his last book was came out and. That was also the year. That was also the year that he died. So, giving you some documentation, we're going to give you several other documentation as we go along. But to to to, to speed this thing up, because we only have a short period of time. The dynastic period. Once the dynastic period started, and they started worshiping um, Amen Ra, Osiris, and all of this. What happened was they degradated or villainized the God that preceded it. So let me give you an example on how this whole thing goes down, even down to Christianity. These, 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 
particular new group of Egyptians came in, later day generation of the same race and same system, they came in and the first thing they would say is, this is the new system of philosophy. It's old philosophy, they just rename it. And so the people will go and say, well, hey, wait a minute, we already have a system of philosophy. It's the Typhonian philosophy. So why should I convert to the new system when we already got a system, good old religion is good enough for me? So as a result, in order to get new people, the new people, uh, 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 to get people to go into the new aspect, what you have to do is a common thing. You have to name the God that preceded it, the devil. So in order for me to get you to follow my thing, I have to demonize or villainize the God before, otherwise you won't get these new converts. So in so many words, with all fairness, we started this. It started as early as ancient Egypt. And so, goes to, so, so to, 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 to keep going, by the time you got a group of Egyptians called uh, uh, the uh, Akhenaten's crew, and later on called the Hebrew, that leaves Egypt. There was never no slavery in Egypt. This is just a group of another priesthood that came up out of that. Um, um, that, that came up out of that. There's also a great chapter in Book of Beginnings, um, African origins of Hebrews as traced from the monuments. So those particular ones leaving, in order for to get the people to go into the new religion, they got to villainize or vilify or demonize the ancient Egyptians. So to give you a streamline on how these things go, in order for a new group of people, the Christianity that comes out, up out of Hebrew, uh, out of the Hebrew uh, aspect of that, or the Judeo aspect of that, in order for this new religion to strive, to, 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 to thrive, they have to villainize the Hebrews. That's why they you get Christians say, you shouldn't listen to the Old Testament. Well, wait a minute, hold on. In the first part, in the first five books of your Bible, the Old Testament, that's, a, that's like an oxymoron. I have a book. You shouldn't go by the Old Testament, but the first five books of your book is the Old Testament. You see what I'm saying? So they villainize the Old Testament. And oh, so, so in this particular case, by the time the Islamic comes, they villainize the Christians by saying that, well, they had a religion, and the, the Hebrews and them had a religion, but their religion became corrupt. But nevertheless, the first five books of the Quran is the same Torah. So my point here is, what we're talking about here is a political thing on how this, these so-called devils come into view. Usually, one man's God is another man's devil. And in the ancient world, in the ancient world, in order for the newer religion to strive, they had to villainize the actual deities that preceded it but the actual deities that preceded it is the same deities that they end up worshiping in the first place you see what i'm saying you got akhenaten comes into egypt he gets rid of amen and he puts up atan or atin take the word amen take the m out of amen and put a t in it you got it baby still the same god still the sun deity you see what I'm saying? So these are, these are ways these things start to happen. I'm leading up to the bottom of it, but I have to give you a sense of a, a, a simulation history. of history yeah, from you particular yeah. people to understand how these things occur. How do we get these things that we call evil, which is nothing but the gods of yesterday? So in so many words, what they say here is this. Every time you have a later generation that rises up and they don't understand the ancient science of the earlier generation, the part that they don't understand, they sweep it in a pile and call it evil. You see, it's, 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 it, we, we do it now in science. We got DNA, and they, they study the DNA. So the part, that, the part of the melanin that the people don't understand, they call it junk DNA. Just to give you a scenario on how this thing comes. So, um, uh, and so, so what happened was, um, 
The first thing they do is they name Set, the original pre-dynastic gods, the evil gods, put them in the mythology. But we notice something here. We notice something here. We have a great pantheon, and the people don't know what pantheon, that's just a great list of the gods or a panel of the deities. And it's interesting, if Set was evil, why when you show, when, they all, when, when you always see the Egyptians showing their pantheon of gods, Set is always included among them. Or whenever you see, whenever you see um, the Egyptian pharaohs, and or the Egyptian pharaohs, and you see this particular picture, you will see them standing between Horus, which is the precursor to Jesus. Horus is Jesus, um, and you, then you will see them standing between Seth, which is supposed to be the devil. So what happened here is we made the observation. We made the observation. Why is it that the pharaohs, if Set is supposed to be evil, why is the pharaohs always standing between Horus, which is supposed to be good, and Set, which is supposed to be evil? You see what I'm saying? Or did the ancient people even view evil in the way that we think things are now? You see what I'm saying? Or were they talking about different aspects of polarities? Polarities. You see, yin and yang, dark light. You see what I'm saying? Shadow light. It's not talking about evil as in wicked as it is talking about different types of formulas and different types of energies. So it would be no different than set that you would, uh, is bleach and horus is water. And so 2,000 years go by, and you will see water. You recognize what that is. But then you will see a symbol on the bleach bottle that have a skull and crossbones. But you have lost the symbol of the bleach bottle. You don't know what that is. So you say, that, that bleach must be evil. And this water must be good. So this is what we're talking about. They were much more advanced and scientific. And what we were talking about was formulas. You see, other than the good and evil as we're talking about. Now, this is interesting here because you got a god in Egypt called Kanun. Kanun. And Kanun shows up with the horns. Okay. Uh, shows up with the horns. But Kanun is also supposed to be a god that created man. Let's, let's go on. In Egypt, you got the god Beth. He's a funny looking figure, a little short pygmy or claw looking figure with a monster face and later on the god Beth becomes the goat god Pan. Now we're getting somewhere because the goat god Pan is the precursor to the devil. So in so many words years later the Christians that didn't have anything in their scriptures to depict Satan because the scriptures they had was borrowed from, they came out of Egypt, they went to Greece, they went to Rome, and Rome turned them into several books of the Bible, and several, several books of the Bible, and they had eight conferences to whittle it down to the Bible that you have now, and last thing is the King James Version. So, but in the legend of that, they didn't have any kind of formula or any kind of uh, uh, image for, for, for the devil. So what they did is they went back in time, and they chose the Greek version of the goat god Pan, which would be the Egyptian version of this, Kanun, and also Set. Depends on, uh, uh, depends on what system you're coming from. But the goat god Pan, which, would later, which is also a later form of Dionysus, and Dionysus, uh, Dionysus is the god of the wine, the vine, just as you see in uh, that Jesus is. So this goat god Pan that they choose that they choose ends up becoming the image of the devil. But what they ever, but but I don't even believe that the high priest 
we know that the high priest at that particular time, when they chose to go God pan, they were not talking about a devil. This is later. This is some stuff that is blown that, that is blown up in the past five hundred years, but has nothing to do with um, what was actually going on. Even the people who wrote the Bible understood that these things have also a lot to do with astronomy, alchemy, and astrology. So the goat god pan is none other than Capricorn. Capricorn is pan. The goat god pan, which would all, which would later on be drawn into in the in the late in the mid 1800s would be drawn into the Baphomet, the famous picture that you got of the Baphomet um, that everybody's scared of, drawn by Olympius Levi in the 1800s. But let, but let me go on, because we'll go into this particular Baphomet thing in a minute. But I just want to give you an uh, aspect of what's going on. So they needed an image of the actual, uh, of, of an actual devil that, that they didn't have. 